this is why it's important to have a single strategy and stick to it, right? Don't do too much at once because you're going to end up seeing so many things, right? Paralysis by analysis, right? Another big problem that traders get into, they try to do too much. Not saying you, Nick, but in general, I've had many of these conversations over the past week or so. People trying to do too much at once. They want to do everything. And when you do everything, you're basically stuck doing nothing. But it feels good. It feels good to do everything until you realize that you're actually not doing anything because every time you do one thing, it goes against the other thing you're supposed to be doing. And then you get conflicting signals. Yep. That's why what's most important to do is find one thing that works and do it over and over again. Find one thing that works really good and just keep doing it. Do that one thing, right? It's not an ego competition. You don't need to have more strategies than your fellow trader. Only on chat forms, right? Or, or you know, in, in Twitter highlights or Instagram highlights are people saying, hey, I trade 24 strategies. How many do you trade? Huh, I trade 30. Take that. Well, how many do you trade profitable? I would love to get involved in one of those conversations. How many do you trade? Just, and just come in like one <laughs> only one yeah i just trade it really really good though how many of your 24 are you trading good well um well i know a lot of words and terms yeah that's yeah, that's good for you good for you right my number one goal in trading is to feed my bank account not to feed my ego all right let's go down to the Lower time frame here, 15 minute chart here on Aussie dollar. Don't worry, I used to be like that. I used to have those similar similar thoughts. Right, <laughs> says they will just share a profitable trade. We all know that. Yep, yeah, that that cracks me up. I love it. I love always a red flag if you see someone that only trade only shares the winning trades. And especially if they, you know, you get those people that share, they share like the Instagram shots of whatever the thing is they're using. And it's like, made, made 3000% today, right? And then like a month later, you get another screenshot, huh, made another 100% today, right? You should ask them the question like, well, what happened, what happened in the four weeks between those two posts? Right, you shared you shared a post in July first that said you made a hundred percent, and then you shared a, a post August third that said you made a hundred percent. Did you not trade between July first and August, or was there some account blowing? Was there some account blowing in between that time? Hmm. In reality, it's like, yeah, I made 100%, right? Because they're trading a position size that is way too big. They're way, being way too aggressive. They probably did make 100% in that day. That wouldn't surprise me at all. If I wanted to, I could make 100% in a day as well. The problem is they made 100% in that day, but because they're overexposed to the market, their positioning size is, is, is really too leveraged, right? When the drawdown comes, because drawdowns always come, right? They probably lost 200%. So they probably lost more than they won. So it's not, you know, I, I, I fully believe the fact that people are making this 100% a day, 100% a month type stuff. But the other side of the story is they're probably losing double of that during the drawdown, right? And that's the difference between your amateur, your social media trader and your professional trader, right? Your social media trader is only concerned with how much they make, how much they make, how much they make, how much they make. Your professional trader is concerned with minimizing losses, minimizing losses. Minimizing, minimizing losses, right? Managing risk, managing risk, managing risk, right? It's funny, and, and I, you can, I can tell right away with, with, with you had a room of traders, and I, and, I, and I did a poll. If I was like, hey, guys, go to the left, or what do you want from trading? Go to the left if you want to make as much money as possible. Go to the right if you're focused on managing risk and really not losing anything, right? You'd probably have about 90% of people would go to the left or whatever the first direction I said, right? Oh, yeah, make a lot of money. Oh, yeah, I make 100% a day, right? You probably have 10% of traders go to the other side where it's like, eh, you know, managing risk is key, right? Guess which one of those traders is going to be profitable? Yeah. 
Yeah, the one, the ones managing risk. Because it's easy to make money in trading. It's not hard at all. How many of you guys have ever gotten lucky on a trade and won a lot of money? My hands up. Yeah, we all we all do it, right? We we all often, I mean, and even without getting lucky, a lot of you have entered really, really good trades, right? It's not your problem isn't finding good trades. You know, yes, you can refine that. But your problem isn't finding good trades. A lot of you guys can find good trading opportunities. The problem is you just, you give it back really, really quick, right? It seems like you put in all this work to make the money, right? You put in all this work to make the money, right? You, you work so hard and you finally get that good trade. And you're like, ah, oh, yeah. And then you give it back like right away. The losses come so quick. You're like, man, right? That's the problem. It's, it's fixing the back end, fixing the, the losing less, keeping those losses small. That's where the, the real difference is being made. And once you do that, then you can do all the fun stuff. I was talking to a trader today. It was, it was a good conversation we had about, it was a trader who had some concerns about how much he can make from trading, right? He listened to a, a recent podcast I did with Stephen Burns, right? And he's reading his book called New Trader, Rich Trader. Um, I think the first one he was reading, he says, hey, Akil, I'm looking in this book and it says that a realistic expectation if I'm a good trader is to make like 15 to 20 percent a year. Because I just want to know if that's true. And I'm like, and uh, Stephen, he focuses more on the stock market. And I'm like, uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you know, what I've always heard um, from from different professional traders is that if you can average three percent a year. You're considered two, uh, if, you, if you can average two percent a year. You're considered a good trader, right? You know, no money management, no funky position sizes, just a straight 2% return on investment. You're considered a good trader in industry. But that's what, 25%? If you can average 5% or excuse me, 2% a month, excuse me, 2% a month, right? You're considered a good trader. That's 25% a year, right? And a lot of people, they, they take a look at 25% and they're like, well, 25%, that's nothing. And you look at 25%, it's actually, I mean, if, if if you're in almost any other investment, I say, hey, I'll give you a quarter percent profit every year. You're probably jumping all over that because what is what is your what is your mutual fund making right now? Right. What is your 401k making? Is it making 25 percent a year? Right. So two percent, two percent a month, you're considered a good trader. Five percent a month on average. Again, no money management, no position size, no that fun stuff. You're considered a great trader, an elite trader. Five percent a month goes to what? That's 60. Math is right. 60 percent a year. Math majors. Yeah, 60% a year, right? You're considered an elite trader. I think you guys would all agree. If if anyone came at you with the promise of, hey, I'll make you give me some money, I'll make 60% return for you, you're you're throwing as much money at them as possible, right? Would you not give them all the money you could? See, and it's tough because we don't we don't put these things into perspective. We we're we're in such a rush to see trading is this get rich quick scheme we're not realistic about it right six i i, I guarantee you you tell some people 60 percent a year right which is amazing again you are an elite trader I, I guarantee some people will be like that's it we're in reality just do them 60 percent a year sheesh right but the conversation that we had was the trader was saying well Let's say this is the reality, right? That that I can expect maybe a 30% return a year being a good a good trader. Like, well, that's not enough, right? How am I supposed to go full time? How am I supposed to achieve financial freedom? Isn't that going to take a, a lot of time? And I said, yes, it is. The 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 truth is, right? Most most traders don't they don't they don't become financially free as soon as they start for they don't they don't go right into full time trading if they learn how to trade. I think the traders talking about, hey, you know, I, I was kind of under an impression I trade and two years later I can be full time. And you can if you have a lot of money, but you do the math, right? Do the math on how much it takes for you to live. Do the math on what 30% um, gives you a year. Obviously, do the math on money you have to put back into your account, money you have to save for rainy day, all that fun stuff. It takes a massive amount of money, right, to become a consistently profitable trader. Now, what a lot of traders will do is, and this is the part they underestimate, um, they use the skill of trading to grow a business, right? They use the skill of trading to start a signal service, to start a subscription service, to manage money. Guess what those things can do for you? Yeah, they can accelerate your income. Why? 
because now not only are you making income from your trading, but you're making income from your trading related business. Right. The money from your trading related business after you take out some for taxes, what can that what could be done with that? That could be thrown back into your trading account, which grows your trading account even quicker. You add that to actually practicing good budgeting skills, saving money throughout the year. I did the podcast the other day about how much you can actually save throughout the year just by eliminating the small little things that you spend money on, right? Small little changes, right? Before you know it, you can easily add a massive amount of money to your trading account a year. Now, here's the kicker, right? The big shocker is that this, right? If you want to trade full time, I always say you probably need about two hundred thousand dollars, right? Obviously, this this is going to be different depending on your living situation and whatnot. But let's say two hundred thousand dollars is a good number, right? Because if you're making thirty percent a year of two hundred thousand dollars, right? How much is that, right? Let's say you're at the thirty percent, which is a lower a lower margin, right? Yeah, you're making about sixty thousand dollars a year. Right. Again, depending on where you live, livable or not livable, you got to put some back into your account. You got to give some away for taxes, all this fun stuff. Right. But it's a livable wage. Right. Even if, let's say, you're, you're only banking a little bit more than half of that, you can at least live off of it. Right. But here's the thing. Right. It looks bad when I say, hey, John, you're going to make you're going to make 30 percent off of your 10K account. And you look at that and you're like, well, that's a waste of time. Right. 10K off my, uh, you know, 30% off my 10K account. Like, why is it even worth my time? Well, here's the thing, right? The money part is easy, right? If you are a consistently profitable trader and you can consistently execute trades in the market, right? All you have to do is take the same actions with bigger account size. Is that, do you guys realize that? The same thing you're doing with your $1,000 account can be done with your $10,000 account. The same thing you're doing with your $10,000 account could be done with your $50,000 account. The same thing you can do with your $50,000 account can be done with your $100,000 account if you're consistently profitable, right? So when you look at something, when we look at money, we're always like, oh, well, $3,000 a year, that's nothing. Well, $3,000 a year can easily turn into $60,000 a year doing the same actions. There's only one main difference. What's the main difference? Your account size. That's the only thing, right? Did, did the percentage change? Still 30%. But all of a sudden, $60,000, oh, that's worth it. $3,000 is not worth it. So the goal... And why a lot of traders get into trouble because the goal is they see this and they're like, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta trade more. I gotta up my position size. I gotta, I gotta do something different to create more. No, stop, halt, freeze. You don't have to do more. Do the same thing, right? Trading wise, do the same thing. The, 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 the question is how can I get my account size larger? And that goes back to what we just talked about. Turn your trading into a business. What if you turn your trading into a business where you create an extra $5,000 a year just off of giving signals to your best friend? That $5,000 a year can be rolled back into your trading. What if you save $5,000 a year from your job, $10,000 a year from your job? You stop spending dumb stuff, stop buying shoes and sneakers, right? Well, now you just added $10,000 to your account. Right? Do you realize that? Not even trading related, if you start off a $10,000 account and you just saved a bunch of money during the year, at the end of the year, your account can easily be $15,000. And then the year after that, maybe you save another $5,000 or another $10,000, now it could be $25,000, right? Maybe you take a loan, right? Nothing wrong with using other people's money. You want to make sure you can outproduce the, the interest rate on your loan, but maybe you take a loan out. Maybe you take out a business loan. You're like, hey, I'm going I'm to borrow $20,000 from the, from the bank because I know if I'm, I've been trading consistently profitable for a long time, I know that I can produce more from the $20,000 than what I would have to give them an interest back. Right? The goal should be to figure out how can I, how can I make money? 
British Knights, baby. Oh, yeah. That's the goal. You don't want to do anything different with your trading. The question now becomes, how can I increase my trading account size, right? And of course, um, I didn't mention this earlier because we don't want to put the emphasis on it. But when you use, if, if you use the money management spreadsheet, you can actually fine tune how aggressive you can be with your position sizing, right? So you can easily take that and talk about 3% a month, right? That 30% return, you throw those numbers into our money management spreadsheet, you can easily turn that 30% into a 50%. You can easily turn that 30% probably into 100%. Now that's probably gonna be too risky, but you could. But those are the two things you need to focus on, right? You don't wanna do anything different with your trading. You don't want to find more strategies necessarily. You don't want to, you know, be more aggressive. You want to trade consistently profitably. You want to keep that even. That should be the thing that is even, right? What you want to do is you want to increase everything around yourself, right? Using trading as a business to produce income. Taking out a loan maybe to produce income. Saving money on your regular life expenses to produce income. Right. Fine tuning your trading stats on the money management spreadsheet so you can make as much pips as possible without taking unnecessary risks to produce income. Right. Elevate, elevate everything else around you and then just do the same thing. And year one may not seem like much. Year two may not seem like much. Year three may not seem like much. But if you do it for five years. I mean, you can sit down and do the math, do that for five years and, and see what your account size looks like. And then you ask yourself, okay, well, it took five years of sacrifice and growing and building and building to achieve this level. But I've got 25 years, 30 years down the road to take advantage of that freedom. Sounds like a good deal to me. That's what you need to concern yourself about. It isn't a get rich quick scheme. It's a work, 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 work very, 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 very hard. And maybe if you do the right things, become successful scheme. But it's slow and steady, right? The power of compounding is, is amazing. It's amazing, but it takes time, right? It takes time. It takes time. But if you have a goal that says, hey, I don't like my job in five years. I'm going to do everything possible in five years to be out of there. It can happen. I work with a trader who did that as well. He, and he, he did it kind of, he was working a job and he went, he, start, he just slowly reduced his hours during the year or during the years. First year, he reduced a little bit. Second year, I think he went a little bit more. Third year, he went half time. And I think the fourth year, it, it, was, a, it was a blessing in disguise. The four, I think it was the, I don't remember what year it was, but one of the years I worked with him, he said that his job was making, um, um, they, were, they were downgrading people no matter what. So he was, he was, he was at fear he was going to get downgraded. So he volunteered to cut his hours. And he said it was like a blessing in disguise because it was something he wanted to do anyway, to focus on his trading. And at, as he was getting better, he was slowly transitioning to working full time to going to full time trading. And he said this was kind of a blessing in disguise. And when I, when I saw this, I was like, this is a perfect excuse I need to, to get focused. So if I, if I take action and say, hey, I'm only going to do part time now at my job, that forces myself to remain serious about my trading. And it was a slow transition, but it was over, it was over years, over years, over years, over years. So it's a very, very good conversation. I hope that makes sense, though, right? You want to keep your trading consistent. Elevate everything else around you. And, and, and there's so many ways to do that. So many ways to do that. Shoot, work the night shift. Clean toilets like I did. Make 50, 50 bucks a night cleaning toilets. I mean, it stinks, no pun intended. But it's another, it's another way to build income. Throw it into your trading account. Boom. All right.